So in this opening passage of this Toccatina, the primary element I would say is this left hand line. Just to get that um, and to play it really evenly, you really have to work hard on finding that perfect balance between letting the key go up and then bringing it back down before it fully gets all the way up to the surface uh, of the resting keys. So I'll play it at, I'm not even trying to play it at 120 because I find that the rest of the piece can get quite tricky to maintain good quality rhythm um, at or in and uh, so I'm, I'm playing it maybe a little bit slower but to get this perfect mezzo piano you know have that perfect pulse going on that's already a tricky thing to practice and each individual piano action will throw in its own set of wrenches into this process so that's one part the other part is on the last eighth note in this heavily marked up score from back when I was still using paper and annotating with pencil uh, you see that accent so maybe I'll go ahead and highlight it so right there that would be the fifth finger action right so that would be the accent not too loud because it's still mezzo piano but um, that has to be precise. Now, to integrate it into this whole, and then have that come out and have it all be in perfect tempo, perfect rhythm, um, this is definitely a candidate for my approach, which I call GOBS, standing for Goal Oriented Backward Step in Practice. And it goes something like this. So at the moment, my entire focus is on nothing but that note, this, right? This note is important. I want it to be absolutely precise. And so I want to put all my practice attention on nothing but it at the moment. So I'm uh, just blanking everything else out of my mind and on video like this, and I'm practicing striking this note with just the right force and I'm also practicing striking it in just the right position because you'll notice my thumb is still on the G and then as soon as I hit that G I'm not just kind of playing it down and staying there I have to integrate this repositioning of my fingers uh, back to this higher G so that's a complicated move and I need to master it. Uh, I don't know what muscle groups are involved but what I'm going to do is show with this square that there is a very important move happening. Okay so that's what I'm practicing. I'm not doing anything else until I feel I understood the kind of physical motion that is required of my body to be able to play this G accent G perfectly just in that moment. Okay, fair enough. Now, as you might have surmised, since we're goal oriented backward stepping, this happens. Now I'm aware that I'm going to play that G with finger one. You kind of see it scribbled there in pencil. And as I do it, I have to shoot out my fifth finger towards that bottom G to be able to strike it. So at that moment, right, you see what I'm doing? I'm starting with my hand more or less in this position where I'm just playing the two top G's. But then as soon as I play the G, I go to my goal by having that sudden, you know, strike. And then back inside, just like when I was back here, right? So if I go back here, my goal was just about doing that. Okay, now having added one element back prior to my goal, 
Now I have to do it both ways. Right? That. So every time I try something, by the way, notice how much my torso had to shift to the right. Usually you're sitting right here. Right? Middle E, center, centered in, 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 in the, on the piano. But um, because I'm playing kind of high up, it's nice to have a little more freedom for my left arm. And so I'm definitely more maybe centered on this D, maybe this E, as far as my torso midline is concerned. Well, at least that upper part where, which is central to my shoulders. Okay, so, right, so those are the two notes and I do have to play them in tempo. I can't just kind of play right at that tempo because it goes like this. something along those lines, that kind of fast tempo. So, okay, once I've mastered that snap, that out and in, and I still have to make it really quiet too. Okay, now it would be a great idea to integrate the right hand as well, because remember, when you practice, it's so important that the coordination of the two hands uh, is learned correctly, and that kind of chord in the right hand in that note with that leap of the fifth finger in the left all of this has to be coordinated tightly for the eventual result to be satisfying right still mezzo piano must not be so loud just a little accent on that bottom g okay so once you've mastered this guess what we're moving backwards so here I'm playing this note with finger two, followed by one, then that leap out. Right, so just left hand by itself to show the concept. And there it is. Really trying to play these higher G's as quietly as possible and still make them sound clearly. Well, cannot be too quiet because then it's very hard to play well. So now with the right hand, yeah, so a little too aggressive on the right. All I have to do is play one, two, five, one, two, four. I don't have those fingers written in, but they're kind of self-explanatory. Another possibility is to play this with three and five. That might be actually easier because five and four are these I don't even know which camera to show them, but five and four are these very tricky fingers to articulate. So maybe five and three is a, a, an interesting idea to try out. Let me go ahead and put that in. So start on three, and then when we get to C, that will be a five. So we have a five three there. There we go. Now. It's not, not quite, doesn't feel quite secure. So I'm going to stay on this little snippet until it feels as secure as I can make it be today. So I'm really not getting that crisp and clear four note combination at the beginning of my snippet. Right, that has to happen. But because I'm so focused on such a small snippet, I can do it. I can be aware of things I need to fix and fix them before I kind of integrate them into my, you know, flow of things. And of course, correcting it later is so much harder. In fact, I would say if you've learned a piece and you're trying to make it better and it, you just cannot make it better for some reason, imagine you've never played this piece before. It's, you're seeing it for the first time, rewire all your pathways usually works best. So in this case, because I find that articulating this and getting to my red colored highlight goal is so difficult, I'm actually going to reduce my snippet and have this chord with, with the extension in the uh, left hand be my goal. 
right? So that's all I'm doing. I'm just freezing. Okay, and now I'm going to practice ah, too aggressive. Right? I'm going to practice getting just this pair of chords just right. Okay, and eventually ah, too aggressive. Maybe a little too light. It's mezzo piano, not piano. Okay, keeping my posture upright. Hmm. Okay, let's get in there. Let's get in there. Too too harsh, perhaps. A little too light now. Maybe a little too aggressive again. <laughs> it's it's hard to get it perfect, as you know. That's all right could snap out a little faster. There it is. That was a nice one. And now in the head, I'm kind of having to get myself constantly back into that tempo. Right, so that my eighth notes are matched to that pulse. Too aggressive. So that checking that my finger is right on that note is very important because eventually I will want to be able to do at least three notes in a row and then jump back out. Then finally that previous chord, not enough accent, maybe a little harsh. And then finally something like that. Still not quite perfect. But anyway, that's in a microcosm. That's the kind of practice I do on all important elements in a difficult passage. That's not the most difficult passage necessarily, but it's important. It's at the beginning of the piece. You want to capture the atmosphere just right. And so I'm going to work on this until I feel satisfied. Typically what happens is you put in that kind of concentrated amount of work. Now I'm talking, so I'm not doing it as concentratedly as I would if I was quiet. But you, you spend, you know, a number of minutes on analyzing and perfecting just one little snippet, then you just leave it. Because unless you let your brain rest between practice sessions, you're not really allowing it to learn from the experience. And so this is where I'm saying, okay, for right now, this is as good as it's going to be. I'm not going to keep perfecting it until I can do, repeat this snippet 100% every time and, and so on. That would be too much to ask. But um, I'm expecting that over a week or so, as I keep re, uh, <laughs> reviewing this snippet or other similar snippets, it will settle into my brain and suddenly what is, it requires so much of my working attention at the moment will become easier and sort of automatic if you like. So that's it for now. Um, I will continue maybe uploading these my solo pieces practice uh, videos once in a while. <laughs>